It's official. The Chicago Bulls will be picking number 11th in the upcoming NBA draft. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the three players that are linked to the Chicago Bulls, along with a player that I think the Chicago Bulls should strongly consider. This is Rico Greenhow, and this is another episode of Bulls Digest. And before we jump into the content, I want to let you know that 78.8% of you guys uh, that watch the videos are not subscribed. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the news and happenings around your Chicago Bulls and without further ado guys let's jump into the first topic of the day and really the only one which is who could the Bulls take at number 11? All right, guys, so this article talks about three players that potentially could land to the Chicago Bulls, and it is our good friend Casey Johnson, who is the sideline reporter there for the Chicago Bulls, and he's talking about three players that uh, would be a good fit for them. Um, in this article, really, you're talking, or you're actually seeing them talk about some of their strong points, guys. So we're gonna go through some player profiles and really what the players uh, would bring to the table table if the Chicago Bulls got them. So uh, this is the article, uh, NBA mock draft, who Bulls are projected to pick at number 11. You see that they have Isaiah Kohler, they have a uh, caller, excuse me, they have Cody Williams, um, and they talk a little bit about the player strengths and things like that. So um, first and foremost, talking about Cody Williams here. So this is a guy that is the brother of Jalen Williams, who plays for the OKC Thunder. And, uh, you know, my initial thoughts about this guys is that he is a bit raw. I mean, he is a dynamic finisher, uh, and a big playmaker, but there are a lot of things that uh, are a little questionable about him, mainly being his frame. They're saying that he's not necessarily the strongest, uh, player in the world there at this point time, which is not a huge deal. I know that players definitely you know, can get stronger, they build out and things like that. They're also saying that his jumper is not necessarily uh, as consistent as you would want right now, which is a little scary. I think they were saying that it's a little bit of a project there and to, to try to make his jumper a little bit smoother. Um, and then as far as just the athleticism and things like that, you wish he had a little bit more. Um, here's what some of the scouts are saying about him as far as, uh, you know, weaknesses and strengths. So um, this is based off of what came out of Hoops Hype, all right? And these are a couple scouts. And so, you know, some said like this first uh, scout here is who said that Williams is the most solid player of all guys. Um, you know, he's got the length, he's big, he can shoot, he can pass. And out of all these guys, I'm taking him first. But on the other end of that, you've got his body type is a little scary to me. Uh, he doesn't have the physicality or the frame of his brother. Um, however, he can put on weight and make shots. He's got a high IQ for the game. He can pass, drive on closeouts. He can rebound. Uh, he does other things well out there defensively he can help and recover uh, he can get block shots too um, so you know these are some of the things that are said and I think this last statement where it says look on one day you look at him he's the number one pick or closer to the number one pick the other days you look at him uh, and he looks like he's a guy that's a late first rounder all right so that screams to me that this is a guy that still is going to need to uh, develop a little bit guys and so you know, I think that the better option uh, besides him right now, and I've said this before, um, I think that, you know, for me personally, it is going to be Tristan Da Silva. I think that Tristan Da Silva is a guy that we should definitely take a look at. Uh, already it says that he's a matchup problem who finds a way to contribute. Uh, I love all the things here and what you're looking at now, these player profiles, this is via the ringer, uh, the off-ball defense, the feel of the game, uh, the versatility, uh, or the versatility, excuse me, and the spacer that he has. Uh, this guy has competed overseas as well. Uh, he's 6'9". I love the wingspan as well, guys. Um, I think this is an incredible pick for us. I think that this reminds me of a little bit more athletic um, Luau Deng, in my opinion. Uh, the one thing that they're going to say about him is that he doesn't necessarily have athleticism that jumps off the page for you, and he doesn't swallow up rebounds, but he does get rebounds. And so, look... I, I, 
I'm thinking a lot of what they're talking about is maybe comparing that a little bit to what Luka Doncic does, uh, or Luka, excuse me. He's more of a guy that he competes, and it's not like he has to use a whole bunch of athleticism to get rebounds. So I think that that is a little bit of a stretch here, and I think that Tristan Da Silva, uh, I think, is going to be the better fit here. Um, you know, he, here's one of the things that the scouts say about him: he's probably going to be around the late first round range. An NBA scout told a uh, hoop hype here: uh, he's older, so you kind of know who he is, and he has good size. And so immediately when he I see something like that. It says that he tells me who he is. That reminds me a lot of a DeMar DeRozan type player. I would love it if I had that type of player on my roster every night. It's somebody I know what I'm going to get from him, not a person that is up and down. And guys, I just think at this point in time, the Chicago Bulls are probably not in a position to get uh, a player that is going to be a major project for us. Like, I don't think that that is a good scenario, especially with the way that uh, we've kind of developed players. I think that we've gotten um, some good players by chance and they've had to play because we've had some injury concerns. But I'm not sure if the Bulls uh, regime right now are the team that you want to come to to really develop. All right. And so I think that that's why a Tristan De Silva makes a lot of sense here because he's a lot more NBA ready. All right. So next up, guys, the next player that we are linked to is going to be uh, Dalton Connect. Uh, I like Dalton Connect. I know he's only 6'6", but he's probably going to be a small forward. Look at his comparisons uh, to um, you know KCP and then also to Ma Max Struess. Uh, these are players that I guarantee you the Chicago Bulls would love to have on the roster. Um, the first thing that you see is that, look, he he's a pull-up threat. He's got clutch games, so this guy loves to take huge shots. Uh, think of a lot like uh, a Clay Thompson type of demeanor. Uh, when I watched him in college, I saw a lot of his games. Uh, and the off-ball defense, he knows where to be. Now, he's not the greatest defender in the world, and that's actually one of his um, flaws. It says that usually what's going to happen is the offense is going to try to attack him on the defensive end. And... My thing is this, he was not the worst defender out there. Um, the, the team itself, Tennessee, was not the worst defensive team in the nation as well. So I think he can hold his own. And I'm thinking of players like, look, Steph Curry is, or, or excuse me, yes, yeah, Steph is good as he can score. Teams probably still try to attack him on the defensive end. And guess what? He's won championships. So look, there is a way and in a, in, a, in a position in which this guy can play positional defense and be just fine as long as you build the roster up around him. And speaking of Steph, I mean, he has Draymond. He has Clay. All right. He's had Wiggins back there. He's had elite defenders to hide the fact that he is not a great individual one on one defender. And you don't necessarily have to be one on one defense is great, but you also need players that can play positional defenses as well and he definitely checks the box here or box excuse me and I think that this is a guy that I feel like if we did select him um, not necessarily going to be upset about this I know we do need some height but we also need a score and we need a guy that can be a wing a starting wing a legit wing one of the issues and, and I love the comments too is that we play a lot of guys out of position this guy can play the wing all right so I do like that um, next up the next player that we are attached to in this particular particular article, article, excuse me, is uh, Filipowski out of Duke. And so, look, he is a guy that I think coaches will salivate and love. This is a guy that can run just about every offense that you can think of. He can handle the ball, but I think one of the main issues for him uh, is just silly turnovers. And so that's one of the things that he's got to cut down on is just being a silly turnover uh, type of big. And then also, too, one of the things that they mention here is his weakness is he struggles with finishing at the rim all right and so that's the same thing that probably you're going to see with uh, Cody Williams as well and that just comes from lack of strength and just also to execution all right and so that's one of those things that you can get better at but he's going to check the box for the size which is what we want um, here's a guy that's coming in at center you guys know I'm with Zach Eady but I'm also with this guy as well I, I think that we do need a center that will go inside unlike Vooch he will do that and he also can already stretch the floor um, so that's one of the things that you love about him. Um, 
I don't like the fact that they compare him to Zach Collins, but look, Zach Collins was a monster when he was coming out of Gonzaga. He just couldn't stay, um, he couldn't stay available on the floor. He's always injured. So, you know, for what Zach Collins could have been, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's great, but I hope he doesn't turn into what the Zach Collins is now. I mean, he's a serviceable NBA player, but we need a guy that's certainly going to step in and take the reins of the center right now if we're going to take a center. So um, not a bad pick for Chicago if they do go that direction. Um, next up, this guy is a guy that I'm going to say outright, if the Chicago Bulls took him, one, we're going to be upset because look at that. He's 6'4 and he's a point guard. All right, that's number one. Number two, guys, I think if we were to take him, um, I, I think that we're going to, to probably set the franchise back uh, probably about another four or five years because, look, this is the one thing that they're saying about him. I get it that he's a dynamic point guard built like a tank with the ability to control the game. I get that. But, guys, it, it is one of those things where he reminds me a lot of um, – Kind of what Jalen Green is, and not saying that Jalen Green is a bad player. He's a great player for, for Houston right now for the Rockets, but he reminds me a lot of a young kind of a J.R. Smith type of player um, where you're going to get like a lot of just... I, I don't know, just unforced errors, just stuff that's going to make you scratch your head. And so for number one, we already have an abundance of guards. So I think that this would be a disaster. And I guarantee you, this is something that our GM is seriously looking at, which they shouldn't. OK. And number two, guys, I'm just going to show you what uh, one of the scouts had said about him. And this is via the ringer, which is really, really, really scary. Look, a daredevil playmaker who needs to cut down on reckless mistakes without m removing the spirit that makes him so dynamic. With the way he throws the ball into traffic, sometimes it's as if he assumes defenders can't see. All right, guys. So <laughs> that is very scary. All right. So we're, we're going to get a point guard that... It, it tells you that he gets down pretty much as he makes mistakes in games. That That's one thing that scares me. Number two, we need to control our possessions as much as possible. We do not need a guard out there who is just throwing the ball everywhere, um, you know, taking shots and things like that out of nowhere. Because that is one thing that they said that he does. He takes like highly difficult shots and he's not necessarily a proven shooter so that would just crush us I think it's going to crowd the floor and I think it's going to hurt Kobe White and the other players that are already there it's just going to be uh, just it would be a disaster if we went with that pick so let me know guys in the comments what you guys think out of all these players do you feel like uh, the player that I mentioned, Tristan De Silva, uh, is still probably the best player out of Colorado that we should take. Uh, granted that he's more, I'd say, NBA ready. Uh, do you feel like we should go ahead and roll the dice with a guy like uh, Cody Williams? Uh, do you think that you know perhaps we're going to see a lot of what we see with his brother um, at OKC? You know, do you guys feel like we should go with the center from Duke? Uh, let me know. And then also, too, before we jump out of here, I wanted to mention uh, I did pay attention here to Tyler Smith is another guy I want to uh, put out there as an honorable mention. Um, Tyler Smith is, I think, a forward that is playing for the Ignite. He's coming out. And the one thing they say about him is he's a spot up shooter. He's a terrific standstill three point shooter. Uh, but one of the weaknesses that they say is that he lacks defensive awareness, which that's a little scary. OK, because we do we need to definitely adjust ourselves on that end. We need to get a lot better on the defensive end. Um, you know, so that's one thing that's really scary about you. And then they're wondering, really, is he really that good of a jump shooter? Like, is he going to be good off the move? Um, you know, it, it, that's one of those things that's scary. But he does check the box as far as being um, possibly a center force or a power forward because he is 6'10". So I just wanted to throw that out there. But anyway, guys, what do you guys think the Chicago Bulls should do? Tyler Smith, Filiposki, uh, do you guys think we should take the kid from uh, USC um, or either of the Colorado players? Uh, so this is Rico Greenhow. This is Bulls Digest. I'll see you guys on the next one. And as usual, go Bulls and peace.